Yesterday, Rafael Devers called out his front office for an offseason that featured very little movement, to say the least. We showed you the quote last night, but let's hear it again, straight from Devers and his translator's mouth. No estoy diciendo de que el equipo no esté bien, pero ellos también tienen que tomar en conciencia lo que no hace falta. I'm not saying that the team is not is not okay right now, but they need to be conscious of what what are the weaknesses and what we need right now. What do you need? <laughs> not a third base, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just say, no lo puedo decir en público. No me cohibo de muchas cosas y eso son cosas que no la puedo decir. Ellos saben, todo el mundo sabe lo que necesitamos. Hasta tú sabes lo que necesitamos. Eso son cosas que todo el que ve el juego lo 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 ve y yeah, no, uh, there's some, everybody knows what we need, you know what we need, and they know what we need. It's just some things that I can't say, like, out loud, but everybody that knows the organization and knows the game know what we need. All right, let's roll, presented by Tau Fair Tire. Jesus Quinones is here uh, from, our, from our sister station right down the hall, uh, Telemundo. And look, we were talking last night. And, and when I saw this translation, I always wonder about translators. I'm like, ah, come on. <laughs> if he's saying it that strong through a translator, something is not being said. So you tell us. I something was not being said there, right? Well, even uh, the body language, right? It's hard to translate body language, but you can see it even in that clip where he kind of moves back. He's kind of uncomfortable. And in that specific sentence, he said, even you know what we need to, re to the reporter. So it wasn't just hey, you know what we need, you know what we need, the front office, it was said, he said, even you, almost like a dig at the reporter, right? Everybody knows, my little sister knows, everybody knows what we need. And I think that's the kind of thing that kind of gets well, lost in translation. Well, the tone and the, uh, the, the anger, I mean, we, we had listeners who gave us more literal translations than the Red Sox, and that's a Red Sox team employee, okay? That's important, a Red Sox team employee. So you gotta know he's smoothing out the edges. This is what Devers said at one point, and I don't remember the translator ever saying anything like this. He says, they have to make changes this year. It can't be like this every year. Otherwise, we will all be playing for nothing. That is a strong statement, Jesus, and nowhere did I hear the translator convey that. So you tell me, is that part of the translator's job if you're, if you're working for the team, that you're supposed to sort of smooth that out? I think... Definitely. I mean, I think you know who you're working for, especially when you have a camera pointed at you and you have a microphone on you, right? I think you're a little more careful with the words that you choose. However, I think it is a little bit difficult just to play the devil's advocate here to form the sentences, to keep everything in context. Maybe it wasn't his fault entirely, but I did see Rafael Devers want to correct him himself. And you saw that two times where he interjected. And in one case, he interjected in, in English, right? He said, but in the middle of the translation. So Devers can understand a little bit and can speak a little bit. And so he wanted to make sure the message was clear. I thought that was very important when he was listening to the translation and he almost added to that. I thought that was well, a, a key moment. Otherwise, we're playing for nothing. That is, that's a big one that I'm sorry. The translator's got to give you that one. No, he's not going to do it. I, I, he's not going to do it. I think most of those translators, uh, you just got, you got to know you're missing something, right? So when you did the job and you said you know who you're working for, what was your approach to it? Was your approach, hey, I got to be, I got to do this with integrity, I give it to the media, exactly what, it, what they say, or did you say, I got to airbrush this thing? <laughs> Well, my guy, one of my guys was Yasiel Puig, and as oh. much as we all know, <laughs> you have uh, to airbrush that. I had to airbrush it a little bit, but yeah. I mean, you try to give as much as you can. Uh, some of them are a lot easier, especially yeah. when they stick to baseball. In this context, I mean, there was no sticking to baseball, right? It was very clear that he was giving them a message, and that was about getting you players. And you've been around Devers before, so you know what his his personality is like. This was a little bit out of character for him. Not as right? smiley as he usually is, right? Not, Not as smiley, as light so and happy. I think it's definitely wearing on him, right? To just see the projection of the season, to see where the team was. I thought one of the lines that was really important was everyone plays this game to win. And simply put, I mean, the Red Sox haven't won too much, right? They've lost more games than they've won in the last two seasons, last place. I think that's the message that all, he was also trying to convey. And not this idea that everything's okay, or that we think everything's okay. I think he was trying to really send a message. Do you think that Devers is happy with his translator? Yeah, uh, you know, and, and if Devers really wants it out the way he wants it out, you know, he can speak English. He understands it, obviously. He doesn't need the questions translated. And the guys down there say that when the cameras are off, 
he talks to the reporters and he can converse with them. But when the cameras are on, he feels more comfortable going through the translator. But if the translator is going to, you know, change the message a little bit, why don't you just do it himself? I think that's a fair point. And I think sometimes when players, or my experience, when players are talking about delicate subjects, that's when they kind of rely on a translator more when they feel really comfortable speaking of baseball and speaking X's and O's, then they don't use a translator or maybe it's easier to talk to a reporter in that sense. However, I mean, I would, I can see Devers not being entirely happy, mostly because of those moments that I mentioned where he interjected. It was almost as if he needed, needed to make sure that they knew and they, to make sure that that was cleared up and to add, because I mean, just him using that word, right? But as he's using, as he's translating, I thought that was a very interesting moment and just in the communication side of it. I'm glad he did it because it, it just tells you everybody's frustrated. Everybody's frustrated with, with John Henry and there's a, we got to admit it, there's some helplessness in, in, involved here. If Devers is frustrated, if Alex Cora is frustrated, maybe Sam Kennedy uh, and, and Craig Breslow are frustrated. All the way up, it doesn't matter because the guy who's got the ball, the guy who's got the hammer, John Henry, is not going to do anything. And we know he's not going to do anything because he may I not mean, love the Red Sox, but he loves the whole conglomeration. He's not going to give it up. It's just a, it, it's a bomb for the team's best player on essentially the first day of spring training to say we have to change, we can't do this every year, otherwise we're playing for nothing. Like that is, that is a bomb. I'm sorry, it is. And Tomasi brought up a good point earlier saying that he didn't want to say what the needs were specifically, pitching or starting pitching or whatnot, to not kind of throw his players under the bus or his teammates under the bus. I'm curious if Devers was in a different situation, what he would say, right? Maybe he held back because of that. I think, uh, I think Jesus, a little, give it some time, two or three months, go back in, talk to Rafael Devers, pull him aside. <laughs> See, you got an exclusive. An exclusive is coming to you, my friend.